We are looking into the consequences of having more police officers in Florida schools. I-Team investigator Kylie McGivern is finding hundreds of elementary school children were arrested over a two-year period. She joins us now. Kylie, I know you poured over a ton of data to get this information. Kind of tell me about that process. So what we did is we went to the state data when it comes to the Department of Juveniles. And what we looked at is there's an age breakdown with the youngest category being age 5 to 12. But what I wanted to look at is like, let's look at the youngest kids under 10 years old. And those couple hundred kids are all nine years old or younger. We even found instances of six-year-olds and even a five-year-old. Yeah, that is pretty shocking. I know that in your report you highlight two examples that made headlines, uh, obviously here in Florida and even around the country, but it sounds like these incidents aren't exactly isolated. That's the thing is we're used to seeing kind of something go viral, and I feel like our job is to add some context to it. And so there was a six-year-old girl out of Orlando. Many people saw this video of her being put in almost makeshift handcuffs with zip ties and taken away. And then when we looked into it to see that she's not alone, there just happened to be video released of that incident. It, it really brings up the question, how young is too young? And Florida, unlike 22 other states, does not have a minimum age of arrest. And that's something I had not really thought of, and I'm sure a lot of parents and just Floridians have not really thought about that if they haven't encountered it. Is there a reason for that? And if there's not, or why, what are people doing to perhaps change that? Well, I think there's a lot of people, and I don't want to paint with too broad of a brush, but that say, give me a break. Arresting a five-year-old, a six-year-old kid, what would be the argument for that? And then from the law enforcement side, what we have heard is basically we need to treat this on a case-by-case -case basis. We don't want to tie our hands in terms of if in their mind an arrest is necessary. And there's a lot of argument, as you can imagine, over that. But there's this idea of criminal intent. And does a kid know what he or she is doing is wrong? And so some law enforcement say, that already protects against these kind of arrests, but we have seen in the data that's not the case. This continues to happen, and there is nothing preventing it at this point. And in addition to the case in Orlando that you talked about, there was also a case in our area. Yes, so there was um, a young boy. He was seven years old at the time. This happened earlier this year, and this was in Pinellas County at an elementary school. And the school made the distinction that he was uh, restrained with handcuffs, but not arrested, or they had tried to restrain him with handcuffs, and that was part of the process. But when I was talking with different experts, you know, the trauma that comes into that is something to be considered. So we talked with uh, this young boy's mom about this, and in her mind, she's thinking, under no circumstance should handcuffs be involved in any form or fashion when we're talking about a seven-year-old kid in her mind, and I think this view is reflected by others as well, what can he really do? And when we're looking at the examples, it's not like every one of these arrests involves a weapon or a gun, which is something that comes to mind in light of school shootings. It's, you know, aggravated assault or battery, and, and what does that really mean when you're talking about a five-year-old? Some really interesting data, some very good reporting. I-Team investigator Kylie McGivern, thank you so much for being with us. You can catch her eye-opening report at 6 p.m. right here on ABC Action News.